All right, greetings class and welcome to week number one. That is right, week number one of your 9410 class, which is your cultural heritage class, unless you are taking one of the other 9410s at the same time, in which this will still be your cultural heritage class, but you also might have pop, red, uh, pop culture references or who knows what have you, because there are several classes that fall under this 9410 umbrella. Anyway, having said that, I am your professor, Dr. J.S.K. Austin, and thank you for joining me for Cultural Heritage for the spring of 2023. So what we're going to do is we are going to use this video time now in order to uh, do a course overview and syllabus review. I'm going to introduce myself to you all a little bit, just try to calm your nerves and everything. And by the time you are done with this video, you should be, first of all, ready to take your syllabus quiz. And you should also have a pretty good idea of what's going to be expected of you this semester, as well as the type of professor that I am and those sorts of things. Um, really, I record uh, this particular video, this first video, uh, in order basically to just soothe people's nerves so that they are not as nervous about taking this class. Now, uh, the first thing that I want to show you all actually is how to speed a video up. I am from rural North Carolina and I talk very slowly as such. So what I want to do is show you all how to actually speed a video's playback speed up. And that way, when you're listening to me, you probably want to speed me up to about a 1.5. And that way you are not suffering as you are watching these check-in videos. These check-in videos are optional, but I think they're a lot more bearable if you are able to speed me up as the speaker. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so we are going to get us a, a YouTube window going on here, or a YouTube tab, I should say. All right, come on, come on, come on. Okay, and so let's say you got this going on, right? And... Uh, I need to find... Okay, fast. Hyundai Santa, Santa Fe versus Honda. Dealing with narcissists is not my thing, so definitely if you have not heard of the Common Ego channel, you might want to check it out. It's actually really, really good. Passport. Hyundai, Hyundai Santa, Santa Fe. Fe. Today, Today I want to talk about, about something, something that, that I don't, don't often hear discussed discuss around, around the subject, subject of, of narcissism. narcissism. And, and that's, that's that, that narcissists, narcissists can be really, 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 really difficult, difficult to get, get rid of. Rid of. Am I right? right? If you been right. there. So you see how she's talking in kind of a normal pace and everything. And she is definitely speaking faster than I tend to speak. But what I want you to see is what happens when she is sped up. So what you can do in order to speed a YouTube video up, you can go here to the settings icon here. And you can go to playback speed and then you can set it. You can usually, um, you can usually set me for 1.5. Uh, 1.25 or 1.5, you'll still understand everything that I've said. So that's why I recommend you place it. And once I put it on 1.5, as you can see, now she is speaking very quickly. I know, I know you're, you're not talking about. about. So, so if you have been discarded, discarded or, or even if you've been the one to discard, discard a narcissist, narcissist, yet you, you can't, can't seem to get, get them, them out of your life, life this, video this video is for you. For you. So, so let's dive, dive into five of my best tips, tips to help you get rid of the narcissist for good. And we're going to jump straight in with number one. All right, so there you go. That is how all of that works. So if you want to speed me up and you're probably going to want to do that, that is how you do it. All right, let's get into this course overview. All right, and actually, uh, give me a moment. I'm going to put this in student view. Okay, so yes, here we are. Step into cultural heritage for the spring of, whoa, that should be 2023. So we are already having problems. Hold on. All right, let's try this again. Okay, Cultural Heritage, Spring 2023. First of all, we do have three sync sessions. They are going to be February 22nd, March 22nd, and April 19th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it is not a valid excuse to be a no-show for these sync sessions and say that you weren't familiar with the proper time in your time zone know what time we meet in your time zone if you are not in central time now here is our guest speaker lineup so far we actually do i believe now have a confirmed march 20 uh march the 22nd speaker but on february the 22nd we'll be hearing from josh shepherd who is a uh, professor at the university of colorado at boulder he'll be talking about the uh, library of congress sound submissions project 
on March the 22nd. Uh, that will, I believe we're going to have Andrea Jackson, who is an archivist with the, uh, uh, Lord, my dog. Okay. Who is an archivist with the, um, Atlanta University Center, which is a, a HBCU or historically black college and university, um, sort of collaborative library thing going on and she does archival work for uh, the institutions of Morehouse, Spellman, and Clark Atlanta. Um, on April the 19th, we are going to have <laughs> Lord, sorry, that's my dog. Hold on. On April the 19th, Stuart Hines will be joining us. Stuart Hines is an archivist with uh, UMKC in Kansas City and he will be talking about the he will he will be talking about the creation and records of GLAMA, which is the Gay and Lesbian Archives of Mid-America. Um, so I do believe I have that March speaker and I'll get an updated uh, announcement in here very, very soon uh, to reflect that. I just need to uh, confirm with Andre and we should be doing that soon. Uh, so our class description. Um, cultural heritage has many definitions, but deals largely with the overarching legacy formed among a cultural people through such things as oral tradition and folklore, artifacts, monuments, architecture, and literature. Also, you can throw in uh, music and some other things in there. Um, the seminar and cultural heritage course will introduce students to cultural heritage concepts and explore pressing contemporary topics on cultural heritage, such as the importance and value of heritage tourism, while cultural heritage is historically a target for military attacks and who merits commemoration in the public square. Professor contact information. I am Dr. Chase K. Austin, and I can be reached at austinj at missouri.edu. By the way, most people just call me Dr. Jace. However, you can call me Jason. You can call me Jace. You can call me Dr. Austin, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, office hours. Uh, well, first of all, office location, 120, uh, 122B. Miller Nichols Library in, uh, at UMKC. So I'm based in Kansas, uh, Kansas City, not in Columbia. Um, email is the best way to reach me. However, I do have an office phone, 816-235-1875, and you can schedule uh, an appointment with me uh, in office hours in person or via Zoom. Um, but you can schedule an appointment with me and you can do that by email and I am willing to meet you on the campus of UMKC. There are many things that fall under the umbrella of cultural heritage. Most people think specifically about museums and archives when they think about cultural heritage. These are important and crucial, but the picture of cultural heritage is much, much broader. Cultural heritage includes a lot of things that people may not readily associate with the term. And this class aims to change that. So um, when it comes to uh, slows or student learning outcomes for your ePortfolio, we are focused more so on slow four, um, but also slow one can be can be applied here. So slow one, graduates will apply the core principles, ethics, values, and body of knowledge to questions in library and information science according to their area of specialty. So the uh, visit to the visit to a heritage site and the reflection paper uh, visit. To, I'm sorry, visit to the heritage site plus reflection paper is the assignment that is applicable to slope four. Is I mean to slope one. As far as slope four, graduates will be able to assess community needs, formulate plans to respond to users of information agencies, and instruct users in using information resources. The four cultural heritages paper and we will be talking about that a bit later. That corresponds to slow number four. All right. Uh, also, hey, actually, I need to mention, I'm sorry, I didn't even mention the reason why I do these check-in videos. Um, so I'm going to have some language in the announcement too, but the reason that these check-in videos are done, um, first of all, I do a check-in video. Generally, um, I do them usually by Wednesday morning. Um, during, well, during weeks that we do not have a sync session. Uh, so if we have a sync session or a guest speaker, we're not going to have a check-in video that week. However, if we do not have a guest speaker or uh, a sync session during the week, then usually, unless I'm too busy, usually, though, I am going to have a check-in video uploaded. Uh, the check-in videos can be, uh, they can vary in length, but this one will probably be the longest one in this particular class. Um, 
this one's probably going to be about 45 minutes long. But uh, again, you can speed these up, and I hope you have done that. Um, excuse me. No check-in videos are optional, and the reason why the check-in videos are even done is, um, I mean, excuse me. Yeah, the reason why we do these check-in videos is because there are some students who want to have, um, different students want different things. So there are students who just want to come into the class, do the work, get the grade, finish, get the degree, go on with their lives. And that's cool. And those of you who are like that, you're probably not going to be watching the check-in videos. Uh, then there are students who really, really appreciate the opportunity to have a discussion or a dialogue or an on ongoing connection with the instructor of the class. They don't just want somebody to put work for them uh, to do in the class, and that's it. They want to actually hear from the person conducting the class. They want to be able to give feedback to that person, which uh, you can, anything that I discuss in check-in videos, it can go back to the, uh, the free-for-all uh, discussion board forum. You can talk about it there, but you can talk about anything you want uh, actually in the free-for-all area. And so this is a way that I might be able to also just get you know, some uh, dialogue spawn between you and your classmates uh, and that sort of thing. So um, that is the reason the check-in videos are done. They are optional unless otherwise stated, and they will be uploaded into the uh, announcements area whenever I do finish them. They are uh, uploaded into YouTube. The reason for that being that YouTube will give me those auto, uh, those auto captions and so that does help with my students who may be hearing impaired. Okay. All right. Let's get back into it. Uh, technical resources. Uh, if you have any tech issues, I recommend you reach out to the help desk, 573-882-5000, uh, or you can email them tech support at missouri.edu. All right. Um, library resources. We actually do have our own librarian uh, assigned to Sissel. Her name is... Kimberly Muller, and I will probably be putting her uh, contact information into the course as well. But you can always, if you need help with what's going on at the library, you can always go to library.missouri.edu and chat with the library uh, librarian, and they will help you. All right. So if you need technical help with uh, with Canvas or with any of those softwares, you've got the help desk again. Online netiquette, just remember that some things that you think are funny may not actually be. And that is, uh, please consider that sarcasm and humor can be misconstrued online. And I've been guilty of that a lot. I always try to be funny. I never am funny. And the results can be quite humiliating. Uh, Zoom. For our sync sessions, we will be doing them through Zoom. You will be getting Zoom links. Um, the week of a sync session, I will generally send the Zoom link probably on Saturday, Sunday, or Monday prior to the Wednesday that the sync session is on. All right. Uh, materials, we do not have a textbook in this class. Um, you, everything that you need in order to, um, do the assigned readings or video watchings or what have you, whatever you're going to need is going to be free over the web or it's going to be available through our library. We do have a grading scale, 91 to 100 is an A, 81 to 90, B, 71 to 80, C, 70 or below, F. All right, we do not award the grade of D to graduate students. Now, um, you cannot, the, uh, the sync sessions are mandatory, y'all, and you cannot miss those, and if you do miss those, then that is probably going to, for one thing, if you would have had an A+, plus, but then you uh, miss a sync session, that is going to go down to an A. If you miss two sync sessions, uh, well, all right, I actually said that all wrong. Okay, uh, if you get an A, but you miss a sync session, you're going to go down to an A-. minus. If you miss two, you're going to go down to a B+. Plus. Uh, if you miss three, you're going to go with that full letter grade down to a B. All right. If you want that A plus, make sure that in addition to just having a flawless semester, you also don't miss any of the sync sessions. All right. And even if you get extra credit from doing extra um, discussion board responses, 
if you miss a sync session, that still won't allow you to get your plus, your A plus or your B plus or whatever half letter grade you were looking to get. Uh, the late work policy, I actually do want to say something about this. This is not something that I, I have this written. I have this written as pretty much a CYA cover your ass sort of thing. However, I am not a stickler for it. I am human and I want to highlight myself as I say, I am human even if I am human with like a weird little thing going on with my hair back there. But I am human, so yes, that means that I get it. Um, the university actually does allow you to take grievance time if a close relative dies, so like parent, grandparent, child, uh, sibling. However, um, beyond what the university allows for grievance, I will allow more. Um, so if you need time because a cousin died or an uncle died or a good friend died or a pet died, just let me know. I will give you an extension. Uh, medical issues. If you have a medical issue, if you have something very high stress happening in your life, such as you get arrested, you get sued, you, um, uh, you get in a car accident, even if you're not hurt in the car accident, but you got to replace your car, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the case may be, uh, when those bad things happen, when life happens, just let me know and I will extend you, okay? Also, they don't necessarily have to be bad things. So there are some good things. If you get married on the weekend, uh, if you get married on Saturday, I'm not expecting you to hurry home and get your discussion board prompt done on Sunday. Let me know you're getting married and I will give you a little bit of an extension or a grace period or what have you. Same for some other things too. So if you, um, I don't know, if you, uh, if you have a child's birthday party, if your, uh, if your kid is having a birthday party or if your parent is having a milestone birthday party, like a 70th or 75th birthday party, or uh, other good news, um, baby shower or housewarming, uh, you know, sort of party because you just bought a house. When life happens, just let me know. I'll work with you. I don't want to interrupt your life with uh, this stuff any more than necessary. OK, but this is in place so I can hold you to it if you don't act right. My my recommendation would be to make sure that you. Also, just stay in good graces with the professor, uh, not just in my class, but in all classes. And if the professor likes you as a person, they may be more willing to work with you. So assignments, when they're due, how much they'll be worth. Uh, syllabus quiz that is actually going to be due this coming Sunday night is worth one point. Get it done. Um, it won't take you very long. There's a midterm quiz. That's going to be four points. and That's going to be due on March 19th. We do, as I said, have those sync sessions. February 22nd, we will be hearing from Josh. That's worth four points. Uh, March the 22nd, we should be hearing from Andrea. That's worth three points. April 19th, we will be hearing from Stuart. That will be worth three points. So be there for all of these sync sessions. Mini interview with a cultural heritage worker. We'll talk about this a little bit. That'll be due on April the 16th. That's worth five points. Visit to Cultural Heritage Site, write up in reflection, worth 10 points due February 12th. So a little less than a month. Top four Cultural Heritage's paper, worth 15 points due March 19th. Final paper, 25 points due May the 8th. And also discussion for participation. There are 15 weeks, so 15 discussion prompts. You will both need to have your own post in the discussion prompt, and you will need to respond to at least one classmate. And that gives you 30 units, so 30 points. And that all adds up to 100 total points. All right. Assignment submission. Each written uh, assignment must be submitted through the course assignment uh, system. And the date and the time will be recorded, blah, blah, blah. I will not be accepting your assignments through email. Please do not send them to me via email. Please upload them into Canvas. Thank you. Also, APA style. I will have a video probably, uh, probably either next week or in the third week of the class teaching you two common APA errors. If you do not use APA often, do not overestimate your competency with APA, because I am going to tell you those two common errors. And I'm also going to tell you that every single semester I have a buttload of students who still make those two common errors. And I get that the uh, videos are optional, that I always have students who make the same mistakes 
that I told them not to make in that video. And it's because they uh, they overestimated their competency with um, they overestimated their competency with um, APA. So again, I recommend that you not do that, and that you talk to me if uh, or that you well that you use you you watch the video the APA video when I do it, and then that you also talk to me or go to the writing center if you have any remaining questions about APA. If you want somebody to check over your citations, again, I recommend you go to the Writing Center for that. Uh, grading criteria for discussion board posts, meaningful and new ideas, 50 percentage points, message coherence, 20, and relevance of replies to other messages that will be at your 30. All right, expectations. What to expect from a technology enhanced course? Uh, this course meets virtually. I do want you all logging in several times throughout the week. Uh, what you can expect from me, I will get in touch with you within 72 hours if you message me or email me. If you do not hear from me within 72 hours, email me again. All right. And then also uh, what the instructors and your peers expect from you. This is very important. By enrolling in this course, you have agreed to contribute to the weekly discussions by accessing the discussion board regularly. This will require team effort because you need to be able to respond to somebody. So the way this is going to work is I don't integrate until the Monday after things were due. However, the reason why I want you all to, if possible, get your original post up by Wednesday is so that there is something to respond to when your students go, I mean, when your classmates go looking to respond to somebody. However, Again, I do understand that life happens. You all will not, I repeat, you all will not be able to get your uh, original post up by Wednesday every single week. I get that, and that's why I wait until Monday to integrate. So if you do not have it up by Wednesday or Thursday, that is okay. Have it up by Sunday, and you still will not lose any points. All right, and we just talked about that. So what topics are we going to go over Let's go over that now, and you can see this in both the syllabus and in the modules. So we are currently in week one. This is where we do the introductory stuff. So you're getting your background knowledge there. What is cultural heritage? Why is it important? This, that, and the other. Yada, 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 yada. All right. Make sure also that you do that syllabus quiz by this Sunday. Next week, preservation concerns with cultural heritage. By the way, one thing that I do want to tell you is that um, I believe it's the first five weeks have kind of drier content, and I apologize for that. However, if you get through that dry foundational content in the first five weeks, then that makes the remaining time in the class a lot more fun. So it is structured like that deliberately, and so I do want you to be aware of why things are structured the way they are. The first five weeks are that foundational knowledge, but you need that foundational knowledge to go ahead with the rest of the class course. Okay, so preservation concerns, we'll be talking about those in week number two. Um, so five issues threatening the destruction of cultural heritage sites, and you'll see those sorts of things. Um, preservation concerns, those are a big deal and something that you really have to be uh, in tune to if you go into museums or libraries or archives or anything like that. Week number three, Closer look at landscape heritage. Um, so there are three types of cultural heritage. Basically, people uh, divide it into three categories, uh, um, tangible heritage, intangible heritage, and then landscape and natural heritage. Um, landscape natural heritage used to be the one that I did last. However, um, I moved that up to be the first of the three that we discussed. So we discussed it in week three. And the reason for that is because the content is pretty heavy in weeks number one and two. So we come back and have a bit of a lighter, excuse me, a bit of a lighter topic in week three. And people really do seem to enjoy that uh, South Carolina, uh, St. Helena Island video. And that is a perfect, uh, that video was perfect for communicating the meaning of landscape and natural heritage, okay? Uh, week four, we'll look at tangible and material heritage, and we've got some uh, readings that are associated with that. Week number five, we'll look more so at intangible heritage, and intangible heritage, a lot of that will include things like music, even though we divide music up into its own module. 
Um, and then as well as like dance and uh, folklore, storytelling, those sorts of things. Literature, uh, that would be your intangible heritage. And that all will make more sense after you get through the materials for that week. Music and cultural heritage. So music is a form in, of intangible heritage, but I actually made it its own. Um, I made it its own uh, module because people were so interested in that. And also you'll see in the, actually let's go ahead and look at this now. Uh, you'll see in the uh, discussion um, that what you have to do for this particular week, week six, the music week, is that you are going to have, um, each of you has been assigned a, um, a music sort of documentary and the documentary is free to view online. Most of them are in YouTube. However, some might be in Tubi or on PBS or something like that. All right. And so you'll find your name. And so, for instance, Sean, you've got the music of Surrey County. And you'll watch and review your, uh, your documentary. However, I will say also, as I'm talking about that, one thing that I am going to say, and this is kind of unfortunate, I did pick uh, music documentaries that would be a little bit on the shorter side, okay? I did that on purpose. However, um, some people wanted, uh, I found out in my last, uh, <laughs> the last iteration of this course that some people actually did want longer videos, longer documentaries. Um, and so uh, it was very weird as far as my Spring 21 group. My Spring 21 group, they actually, they absolutely loved the music module and they love their music documentaries. Uh, my spring 2022 group did not, they did not like the documentaries. They panned them. Uh, they did not like them. And, uh, so I was really glad that they only had like, <laughs> like, um, sort of shorter documentaries, not things that were two hours long. Um, but yes, yeah, so hopefully you all will like this, but we'll see. But I definitely wanted to do music documentaries that really also had that cultural element into them. And so that's why I picked the ones that we have uh, in this class here. Okay, so uh, music gets its own module. In week seven, we, uh, we talk about indigenous people's concerns with cultural heritage. And in this case, we're not necessarily talking about uh, indigenous Americans or Native Americans were talking about the people who were indigenous to any continent prior to uh, what we refer to as uh, the European invention or uh, Europe European colonization of other continents. So, uh, um, so that means indigenous peoples can be uh, black people in Africa or Australian Aboriginal people in Australia or East Asian people in East Asia, or South Asian people in South Asia, et cetera, et cetera. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on. Week number eight, the hidden heritage of small town and local businesses. Um, you'll actually watch, uh, I actually, uh, for this one, recorded something of my own back in 2020. And this was uh, my friend who uh, owned a music store in my hometown, he has I mean, I say it, but he's had to close his music store down. Okay, but uh, this was uh, the last Christmas Eve that he was in business there, and we talk about a uh, small town business there and the cultural heritage implications of it. Plus, you do have some additional readings to read as well, and these readings are pretty small. Um, Week number nine, more than a resting place, cemeteries as cultural as crucial cultural heritage resources. Uh, the whole cemetery thing, I know it weirded some people out uh, the first semester that I taught this, but uh, my spring 2022 people really, really loved this uh, this cemetery unit. So um, that was good news, I guess. We kept it in and we will always have it in, I think. Uh, week number 10, um, our topic for week number 10 is going to be undermining identity, uh, knowledge, and culture, why invaders and terror groups attack cultural heritage. And you'll see some readings because, yes, when invading armies or terrorists 
when they are uh, invading one thing or trying to strike terror within people, one thing they do is they do go after cultural heritage. And we have even seen the Russians attack cultural heritage um, within the Ukraine. So this is a real life concern. It's a to the day <laughs> concern. OK. All right. Week number 11, heritage tourism, getting uh, the commodification, I guess, of cultural heritage here, but cultural heritage, uh, co heritage tourism is really, really important, especially for small towns. It's a very big revenue source. All right. So I think that will be a very interesting uh, module to a lot of you. Uh, week number 12, Confederate commemoration. Uh, there are some considerations here, quite a few of them, actually. And so we are going to Confederate commemoration really informs a lot of other things uh, regarding who we commemorate in the public square and why. And so that's why we do have this module. And this module has a lot of optional readings in it as well. All right. But then we move on to week number 13. Week number 13, women in uh, commemoration and other elements of cultural heritage. So you're going to watch another video that week. And that video is going to be between myself and a utmost uh, woman scholar, uh, Dr. Alexandria Russell, who her um, her dissertation actually dealt with uh, commemoration of women specifically. And you're going to see that even though most cultural heritage workers are women, uh, cultural heritage uh, commemoration of women who do this work and who really, really make all of our lives better, it's lacking be much better. And so I want to call attention to that because I'm hoping that you all will do some things for commemoration of women in cultural heritage. And I really, by the way, hope that you all just enjoy the uh, the little video clip that you're going to see um, that, because you get to see just how much uh, this cultural heritage piece means to AJ, AJ, AJ Wilson, sorry, AJ Wilson who is a former uh, basketball player with the University of South Carolina, and now I believe she plays for the Las Vegas Aces. All right, and moving on, number 14, week number 14, food as cultural heritage. Food is a big cultural heritage thing, and so you've got a little book to access and read there, and that will be pretty simple. And then finally, that last week, we'll be doing Forgotten heritage. And so that will include, uh, for instance, a perfect example, forgotten heritage, African Americans in Montana territory. I can tell you there aren't very many of us as black people in Montana. And so that heritage has been kind of forgotten, but you got a journal article kind of uh, opening that chapter back up. So again, help is available, help desk COVID, I'm not going to worry too much about COVID just for the simple fact that we are online class. So we're not going to be coming in contact with each other, really. Uh, academic integrity, please don't cheat. Please cite your sources. We'll keep it at that. You can read the rest on your own time. Academic inquiry, um, do not make audio or video recordings of course activity. Do not share. What happens in this course stays in this course, and I'm dead ass serious about that. FERPA, you are entitled to some privacy as a student. I cannot share your grades. I cannot share a lot of stuff without your permission. So uh, FERPA keeps me in check and protects you and keeps your information private. Intellectual pluralism, uh, pluralism. Eh. Uh, mental health. For those of you who are uh, in the Metro Columbia area, you actually can use uh, Mizzou Counseling Services. For those of you, however, who do need uh, counseling services or something, you need something, you, you need somebody, you need help, please call that number if you are having a crisis, even if they cannot put you in touch with a counselor uh, because, let's say, you're out of state or something like that and you can't use a Mizzou counselor. That does not mean that they don't have other resources for you. I don't know exactly what they have for you. I just know they tell us, tell you to reach out. Again, netiquette, make sure that you are being careful about what you say, uh, what you write. Religious holidays and accommodations. Yes, if there's a religious holiday and you need some time off, go ahead and ask me for some time off for your religious holiday. You are entitled to that. Non-discrimination. 
I cannot discriminate against you. You cannot discriminate against each other for issues regarding re uh, race, gender, sexual orientation, uh, religion, uh, colorism, age, disability, veteran status, all of that stuff. You're protected from discrimination. Don't let anyone discriminate against you. Finally, uh, for students who have disabilities, please, 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 please. Know that if you contact the Missouri Disability Center, uh, University of Missouri Disability Center, they can get an accommodation plan drafted for me. And that way we can make sure that you have a fair chance in completing the course. And that will do it for our syllabus. So let's go ahead and move right on into the assignments and talk about those really quick. And then uh, I'll have a few parting words and that will be all. All right, so let's look at these assignments. I am going to try to keep this at 45 minutes, so we're going to go through these assignments quickly, but I'm going to talk about them more when we get closer to time. Okay, so syllabus quiz. It is uh, due on Sunday night. Please go ahead and get it done. The visit to a cultural heritage site. So you're going to pick a cultural heritage site and you are going to visit that site, interact with that site. You are going to be in critical thought and think about the readings that you have read so far and let them inform how you view this cultural heritage site. Uh, this will be due again on Sunday, February the 12th, and that is going to be worth a bone, 10 points. Make sure you do well with that. Cite outside sources. Use APA properly. You will have a midterm quiz due on February 19th. And so do that. I believe it's four questions long. All right. You'll also have a sync session on February 22nd. All right. Let's move on. Top four most important cultural heritages. You will have sample papers here. So we've got sample papers, because I know that's kind of a different assignment, but we've got sample papers to guide you through that. But what you're going to do is you are going to identify a community. It can be a city, it can be a county or something else. And then you are going to discuss what you think are the top four placemaking uh, cultural, cultural heritages or cultural heritage resources in that community. You're going to talk about them. You're going to talk about uh, how you feel they come together to provide uh, identity for the place that you are discussing. All right. Uh, so, and I've got a very brief example. Also, I'm from Warren County, North Carolina, and so I talk about four things that are special to Warren County, North Carolina. All right, let's keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Uh, the mini interview with a cultural heritage worker, what you are going to do is, and this can be as simple as you just uh, having them uh, answer the questions and then you can just paste your Q&A right into this area. But this is for vocational guidance. So the reason why this assignment is done this way is because it's supposed to help you with vocational guidance. It's supposed to help you see what types of jobs there are in cultural heritage out there and how you can land one of those jobs. So that's what these interviews are for. Once they're all uploaded, what I do is I encourage you all to go back and um, read what your classmates have submitted. And that can give you some ideas of what you can do in the realm of cultural heritage with your MLIS. And it will also show you how you can get there, what you need to do in order to get there. All right. Um, so that is peer oriented learning. And then finally, we will have our final paper. Um, and our final paper will be that you can either uh, do a confederacy argument or weigh in on a naming controversy. And so, um, again, the uh, the readings in the confederate module, they really, really help inform um, this. They, they really, really help inform um, the, uh, the final paper. Now, here's something, and I am going to make a note of this in the announcement as well. In lieu of doing the final paper, if you want to do some sort of cultural heritage 
project. Discuss that with me. All right. And I will be willing to let you do the project instead of the cultural heritage final paper. OK. And so um, and I'll talk about uh, some of the different things that people have done in the past as far as projects are concerned. But if you don't know whether something can count as a project, all you really need to do is email me and ask or message me and ask. I'll send Jay at Missouri.edu, any place, any time, any town, and I will be more than happy to let you know. All right. Um, but yeah, so some things that people have done in the past include uh, I had a student who was like digitizing postcards and he made his postcard digitization project that he was already working on. Um, he made that and reaching a certain uh, benchmark in that project. He made that his uh, project for the class and that was fine. I had another student um, actually put together promotional materials for um, for a museum, I believe. Uh, she uh, put together like a flyer and a pamphlet for them and let them use those uh, free of charge. She gave those over to the museum. That's something that could count as a cultural heritage project. Uh, and there are other things that can count as cultural heritage projects as well. You can do a a presentation about uh, local history or something at your library or about genealogy or something like that. Um, there are many, many possibilities. So if you think of something and you're not sure whether it'll count, just email me and we will work it out. We'll talk. We'll figure it out. Okay. So yeah, just email me and that's going to be a recurring theme. Just email me or message me when you have questions and we will get those questions worked out. Okay. Um, I think that is pretty much it for the course overview. And again, I am going to try to keep this at 45 minutes. So I'm going to um, talk about myself really quick here. Uh, so my name again is uh, Dr. Jace, Jason Austin. I am originally from Soul City, North Carolina in the county of Warren. And that is a real place. I got a bachelor's degree from the University of North Carolina, Wilmington in 2005 a uh, master's degree in library science from North Carolina Central University, which is the only historically black college with a uh, accredited library science program. I earned that master's degree in 2008 and I got my, um, my PhD in library science in 2017 from the University of South Carolina. I have worked as uh, mostly as an academic librarian. However, I do also have public librarian experience. And then when it comes to academic libraries, I've done a comprehensive teaching institution, a research institution, and a community college. So I have varied experiences there. Um, and one thing that I just want to talk to you all about, um, the reason why I have such, I created this course. First of all, I want you all to know that uh, cultural heritage was actually an emphasis uh, the emphasis and focus of my PhD program at the University of South Carolina. So that's how I gained this interest in it and gained the knowledge to create a course. Uh, the course does borrow elements from the courses I took in South Carolina, but I also um, added my own spin and my own, my own uh, I put my own localization in this course, okay? Uh, made the course mine, designed it how I wanted it to be, and this is really the only course of its kind in the entire country, okay? Uh, the way I designed it, nobody else in this country is designing a cultural heritage course that way. So I want you all to also uh, keep in mind, keep that in mind. And I think the cultural heritage is important because I really do feel that cultural heritage is what can be the bridge builder uh, for us uh, as people. I think that you know, when when we look at other people, we recognize differences. We're a tribal species. Um, so we recognize, oh, this person is lighter than me. This person is darker than me. This person has a different hair texture, different eye color, different uh, height, weight, all that stuff. Um, eyes may be shaped differently and so forth and so on. Um, we look at all these things that separate us. And some people try to pretend that the things that separate us just do not exist. I'm going to go slightly over 45 minutes. People try to, um, there are those who try to act like those things that make us different don't exist because they want us to be absolutely alike. I'm somebody who appreciates beauty and differences. And if you're into cultural heritage, you are probably like me, somebody who can recognize beauty and differences within people. 
Okay, and so if that is who you are, then cultural heritage, I believe, is for you. Learning about cultural heritage is for you. And I think that we would have a lot less racism and bigotry, um, religious bigotry and genocide and all of these terrible things. I think there would be a whole lot less of it if people understood other people's cultural heritage, respected it, learned more about it and realized that there are similarities, even with cultures that had no contact with each other. There can be very, very strong similarities in their cultural heritage. And so cultural heritage, quite frankly, I feel is what makes us human. Okay. All right. So with all of that said, the last thing that I want to leave you all with is um, just also be mindful of bias. I uh, taught when I was a PhD student at the University of South Carolina. I did teach down there. Um, I had spectacular uh, teaching evaluations. I moved to the Midwest and my teaching evaluations uh, were terrible for the first couple of years. Um, and people were saying things that they didn't say in the South. People were calling me abrasive and aggressive and uh, defensive and all of these things. And to be honest with you, and I don't pull any punches here, I think there is a lot of discomfort with me being black. I think that this is, uh, we, I, I know that most white people actually do not have, do not ever have black teachers ever in this country. And um, in the South, that tends to be less of a problem because in the South, because of the plantation history and all of that stuff, you do have, um, you do have black people in rural areas in the South and suburbs and in inner cities. Um, in the Midwest, you tend to mostly have black people only in larger cities. You don't find them in small towns or rural areas. So a lot of people in the Midwest do grow up ne not really encountering black people. And I, so when people say I'm aggressive or abrasive or defensive, I've never caught those things when I'm in places where there are black people. So you can see where this is headed, right? Okay. So um, one thing I would just encourage you all to do is perhaps check your bias. If you think that I am abrasive or aggressive or defensive or whatever, and you're tempted to put that in my teaching evaluation, am I really, or is it discomfort because I'm the first black teacher you have? Or for some students, I'm even the first black person they've actually really even spoken to. Again, this happens a lot less frequently in the South, but in the Midwest, things are a little different. All right. So, um, you know, it is very difficult to be a black uh, person teaching in the Midwest. Um, you can even Google. Uh, there is an article out there um, that a black professor teaching in Iowa, I believe, wrote in the, um, the, the column that she wrote was the black professor, uh, the black Midwestern professor teaching MAGA babies is not OK. No, I am OK, but I am going to say, yes, uh, the amount of racism I've experienced here in the Midwest dwarfs what I experience in the South. It's not even close. OK, um, and that's from students. And then that's just from people that I meet around Missouri. And it just is what it is. But if you feel a discomfort with me due to my race, my skin color or whatever, I would just encourage you to get over it. One thing that you need to do is get used to working with different types of people. You, as a librarian, will need to serve whoever walks in that door. All right. So I am going to leave it right there at 48 minutes. So we did at least keep it under 50. I am Dr. Jace. Peace and grace. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.